four decades ago. They burned him. Ten years later, they blasted him to hell. Or did they? This October, he's back like you've never seen him before. In Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. Michael lives, and this time, they're ready. This is where it starts to become sh- Party peoples, Bobo here with Brass Real Brothers. Thanks for coming back for some more popcorn. Well, it was 1989, what some refer to as the year of the sequels. So many influential movies in the history of Hollywood came out that year. I'm not sure that we've ever had a year that big for movies before or since. Some were instant classics and milestones in cinema that we would love for years to come. Forever, actually. And then we had some not so good ones that we would love to hate for years to come. Well, all of the big three in the slashers had movies come out that year. And some would also say that all of those movies for each of those franchises were the worst installments in them. Maybe over time, people have grown to love them a little more, like myself. And don't get me wrong, I hold a special place for all these movies in my heart. I love them all. I watch them every Halloween. I just don't think some of them are actually quality films, while others really are. The Halloween 5, picks up right where it left off in part four, but it suffered from the same thing that happened when they made Halloween 3. They made it too quickly after part two and it just didn't do anything. Because Halloween 4 was so successful and people were so happy that Michael was back, Mustafa Akkad and crew, again, they were just like, let's get away, we gotta get on this man. Holy shit, man, you gotta get on that. You can tell they rushed this movie 100%. It takes time to write a good script. Horror movies can be one of two things. They can actually stick with you forever and you're thinking when you walk out of the theater, Oh, damn, that was awesome. Or you can walk out being like, that sucked. <laughs> Not only is this just a mediocre film at best, it takes all kinds of weird choices that I just don't understand. And this is where the Thorn thing comes in, the Thorn cult. You guys heard me in the last movie referring to the Thorn trilogy. Well, man, this is where I just, I don't get it. The man in black and the boots and the spurs and the hat, it's just... I'm at a loss for words. Now, because this movie was made so quickly after part four, it does have kind of the same tone, but then it doesn't. It gets stupid at certain points. So we get a rehash of the last one and everything and showing Michael getting killed at the end, but then about as cheesy as you can possibly get, they just show Michael floating down this ravine, just kind of tipping with the rapids. shred of Michael that was haunting and scary and just menacing is gone at this point. He stumbles upon some guy that's like working in some sort of mine or something? I don't know. The guy saves Michael and takes care of him for a year. Yeah, that's right. This one takes place a year later. It's on Halloween night again. Wait a minute. So Michael's been down there for a year? How did he eat? Piss or shit? Cut to Jamie, she's in a mental institution because of what happened at the end of part four, her killing her mom for no reason, and now she's mute, she won't talk, and her and Dr. Loomis have this like special relationship. Yeah, old Loomis is back again, crazier than ever. Tell me what you know, right, right, right. Jamie, please. And so is Rachel, her sister. But I gotta say, man, they gave her a terrible death to send her off with. I don't mind if you kill somebody in this movie that was the main character in the last film, that's great. But give him a good death scene. This one was just silly. Michael killed her with some scissors. No. All the kills in this are crappy. None of them are worth remembering. Seriously, none of them. I mean, they're even stealing kills from other films in this movie. The premise in this one, again, is pretty much the same as the last one. Michael escapes from that dude that was taking care of him and grabs his mask that that guy so nicely hung on to it for Michael. And now Michael's on the loose. Kills him first, of course. But this time, Jamie can see what Michael's doing when he's killing. Oh, God. Yeah, so Jamie can't talk. She's in an institution. And when Michael starts killing people, she starts having all these seizures because she's vicariously living through him. Jamie also has this little friend with her who's this little badass and he's helping her out and he's like her knight in shining armor. There's this other character in the movie named Tina. Oh God, Tina is terrible. 
Man, she was in the movie for way too long. We never saw her in part four, but now she's got this awesome relationship with Jamie. Tina's all Jamie has left because Rachel got killed. I mean, yeah, she's got Dr. Loomis in there, but she's in this loony bed and everything. There's kind of a creepy moment where Tina gets in the car with her boyfriend, and her boyfriend's just jerked the whole time. But it's actually Michael Myers, because Michael had killed her boyfriend with a garden hook. <laughs> And I guess he took the boyfriend's car and put on the mask that the boyfriend was wearing. But I gotta say, that part is a little creepy. She's kissing all over Michael in that weird mask. But then out of nowhere, we start seeing this man in black showing up. And they focus on his boots, and he's got these weird silver and black boots with spurs. He's got a trench coat on, a black hat. And it's like this guy's showing up around the area where the killings are happening every time, just ironically. Look, this is where you can tell they were truly running out of steam. I mean, they were really just getting to where, look, what do we do next with Michael? And all horror movies were getting like this at the time. It was just a sign of them shitting them out year after year after year. I mean, the Friday the 13th movies at this point literally were making one every year. But we'll get to that. They kind of started that evil thing in part two where Dr. Loomis was at the school. They saw the chalkboard. It said Sam Hain on it. Sowing. And then they brushed over it pretty much in part four. Again, they talked about the evil a little bit with Dr. Loomis. But this one is where they try to make it bigger than Michael. They're trying to say that there's this like cult out there. There's something else that's fueling Michael or inspiring Michael. Oh, God. It's scary when you don't know anything about him and he's doing it just because. I mean, it gets so all over the place with this script. You can tell that they were trying. I can see that they were trying to make a good script. But like I said, a good script takes time. You can't just shut it out unless you're John Hughes. The movie's not all bad though. It isn't just a crap fest. There is a cool little car chase scene out in this field. It's just shot well. It has a creepy element to it. And finally Tina gets killed. I'm sorry, she's just so annoying in the movie. But man, her kill scene was terrible. Look at this knife going in there. I'd say probably the scariest moment of the film is when Jamie's in this air duct. She's having to like escape from Michael and she's going through this air duct that like goes down. It's in a basement area. Michael's like stabbing through there and she's having to crawl. Man, she does some badass acting and I truly feel bad for her. I'm scared for her in this scene. Now they got the SWAT involved. Loomis has convinced the cops and everybody to go back to the Myers house. Oh yeah, the sheriff is the same sheriff from the last one. In months! In months! They got this cop outside that gets killed by Michael with this awesome overdubbing before the death scene and during the death scene. It looks like one of ours. It's a cold tip. <laughs> and now Loomis is actually baiting Jamie at the Myers house to get Michael Myers to come back in there and he's scaring the shit out of her. You want her? Here she is, little <laughs> Like I said, Loomis is off the handle in this one fully. Ultimately, they end up baiting Michael with this chain net and injecting him with a bunch of tranquilizers? What happened to the 100 bullets and the explosions in the last two movies? <laughs> so they end up getting Michael and apprehending him, finally taking him to jail. What, shouldn't he be in a mental institution? But they had this great shot of Michael just sitting in jail with his mask on. Yeah, that's right, they just let you keep everything when you go into jail, especially if you have a mask. And then we get another cliffhanger. Jamie's sitting outside with this cop in the cop car and they hear all these bullets going off. And you gotta love the sound of this machine gun. Classic 80s sound effects. And it ends with Jamie walking to this police station and there's been this massacre. This guy in black, the man in black, came in there and just shot up the station and stole Michael out of there. And it cuts to black. And what's with these two cops? Who thought it was a good idea to put this stupid ass music behind them when they're walking around? All clear. Nothing above, nothing below. I don't think that you could any more successfully take away the fear out of a horror film more than you did at this film. Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers was let down and it was crap shoot. They completely derailed off the tracks at this point on what made Michael scary, what made the movies good, and they were just trying to spit out the films to make a buck, and it shows. I give Halloween 5 a D+. Plus. All the reason it's not any lower or an F is because it does have Michael Myers and has a couple redeeming qualities that are scary, and I grew up watching it. I do have a Halloween film that goes lower than this in grading, though. Just gotta keep watching. They actually pick up some steam, though. The next one, Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. I really like that one. Well, that'll do it for this review, guys. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Look for Brassworth Brothers on Facebook. Look for Bobby Williams on Facebook. And look for Brassworth Brothers on Twitter. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button so you can help us make it to the top. And as always, if life gives you lemons, make some hot, fresh popcorns.
Get, get to the little girl. 